What's up, YouTube? Thanks again for hanging out with us at Cloudy Walk Overland. This week, again, we're not able to get back out on the trail. We're another week closer, though. But this week, we're going to install the Terraflex Nebo roof rack. This is in preparation for a big item later to come. Welcome to the Cotty Waffle Garage. This week we're going to install the Terraflex Nebo roof rack. Terraflex does a really good job with a detailed video on their YouTube channel about how to put this on, but I want to take you with us on our journey as we get it put onto our Jeep. We've already taken our roof off with our J-Bar lift system and getting ready to put the inside brackets on. Once we've got all our supplies laid out, it's time to get to work. So one of the other nice things about this kit is the detailed templates that it gives you to be able to make the correct cuts and the correct holes in your top. The first ones we're going to cut out are the ones that go to the brackets that hook to the roll bar. One alternative to using scissors is using a razor blade or an X-Acto knife. Seems to me to be a little bit easier and you can get a straighter, cleaner line doing this this way. Just make sure that when you do it, you've got something you don't care to cut into underneath it. So if you had a Jeep with navigation, this is where your navigation antenna would live. It provides instructions on where to move it and how to, how to move it. We don't have that luxury in this one, so we're going to go ahead and move on a couple steps. The directions say to put some cardboard underneath here. It'll help you cut a little bit easier, and it won't scratch your paint when you cut through it. Make sure zip your padding back up uh, to where it's in the, the position that it needs to be before you make your slits. So once you get your cardboard in, everything tightened back down where it needs to be, then you're going to want to line up your template. It's going to line up with the edge here, and it's also going to line up with the zipper over here. Once you have the template lined up and you have everything where you want it, you'll want to tape it down. Masking tape would probably work better in this situation, but I didn't have any masking tape. We'd used it all, so we're using electrical tape. Okay, once we've got everything in place and we're sure we've got it where we want it, everything lines up. The pink lines are where we're going to make our slits. Use something sharp, an X-Acto knife, a uh, single blade, razor blade, something like that. One thing you could do, once you get these made, is if you want to uh, keep them, thanks car, if you want to keep them from fraying or anything like that, then you could take uh, something to melt the edges just to keep them from fraying. So now we're going to install the bracket into the slits that we made in the cover. When we get it through the slits, we're going to put our factory hardware back in, just finger tight so we can move it around and adjust it as needed. Let's move to the back. So now that we've got our templates lined up and taped down, we're going to go ahead and cut our back slots too. Now we're ready to put the bracket on the back. You'll notice we got the XG cargo bags, um, the rail systems for the bags. You'll want to put this bracket underneath of those brackets. So we're going to put it through the slits. We're on 
like that. We use your factory hardware in the two bolts or the two holes, and then you know, use a supplied bolt to put in the third one right there. So once we've moved on to the top, it's time to put our templates on. Now, when you put these templates on, you've got one time uh, to cut. So make sure that the templates are exactly where they tell you to put them. One of the, the tips that it gives you is take one of the gaskets, one of the gaskets here, um, and slide it down in between your weather stripping, and that will give you an exact spot to butt up against for your paper. See how it sits exactly there? And then we're going to make sure that everything is sitting where it's supposed to. I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape on this end. Just going to hold that in place. And then we're going to work our way down. And that should line up right at the back. Right where the edge is. We're going to tape it down. Actually, you can see I had it off just a little bit. So we're going to move that over to where it's dead center of the ridge. We're going to use a little more tape right here just to hold that down. And we're going to go back up here and make sure that it doesn't move. You see it did pull loose a little bit. So I'm going to readjust just to make sure we're where we need to be. Once we're satisfied there, line the wings up here. Take them down. Now before we cut, we're going to measure all of these holes to make sure that they're the right distance apart. And if they're not, then we'll go ahead and move things around and make sure that they are exactly where we want But I do not. So now that we've got all of our templates set up, we've made our measurements twice. We're at 43 and 15 sixteenths. Actually, what I've shown here on my tape measure is 53 because my zero is at 10 over there. I just want to make sure that we were exact. So we've checked it, we've checked it several different locations, and we've checked it twice because we're only going to drill once. When you make that hole, it's there. We're done measuring and we're ready to drill. We need to mark these holes. The easiest way to do that is to mark it with a center punch. I like to use a spring loaded center punch and put it right in the middle. Now that we've center punched our holes, we're going to go ahead and put a small pilot hole in. Once we have our pilot hole, we're going to go ahead and drill to the correct size. There are quarter inch drill holes and 11 seconds drill holes. So by this point, you've drilled a bunch of holes in your roof, and I hope you're now committed to having a roof rack.
So now that we've got our holes drilled and we've got all of our supplies here to start putting the first leg on, we're going to start with the passenger side front. Uh, per the directions, you have a mounting block that goes on the bottom and a gasket. This one's going to be your top and it also gets a gasket and it's going to sit right over top of your holes. Alright, so we ran into a little bit of a snag. When you order the Nevo rack from Terraflex, it says it fits all four-door JKUs. So, we tore into it, started putting it on, got to the front rack mount and realized it does not fit. So, I'm going to show you a close-up video of it here, but if you see the gap here, and you see the gap here and it's resting right on the ridge. So apparently there is a different bracket for the front of these. Um, <clears throat> I got to looking on TerraFlex's website, um, was just looking around some support stuff, little box popped up and asked how can I help? Now this is Saturday night at eight o'clock and I typed in having issues with my Nebo rack. Had a guy pop right on there, asked me what the issue was. We talked about it for a couple minutes, and he politely told me that if I would have read the first paragraph of the instructions, it plainly says, if you have a, if you have a 2007 or 2010, or up to 2010 rack, then you need a different front bracket, and please call Terraflex, and they will get them to you. So that's what they're gonna do. They're sending them out Monday. We're gonna finish doing what we can on it tonight, but kudos to Terraflex for reaching back out to me on a Saturday night at 8 o'clock to help me get my problem fixed, even though it was my fault. On this one, you're going to have to have a little bit of help. So Deb has volunteered to help me, and she's crawled underneath the top to put this up through the bottom here. So just like the front, bolt, washer, O-ring goes through the bracket, then she's going to put the bracket underneath. Right. She gets through. We're going to put our gasket on. Put our mounting foot on. O-ring. Flat washer, T-nut, front starter, go to the back, O-ring, flat washer, and T-nut. Last Saturday night, we talked to Jake from Terraflex, not necessarily Jake from State Farm, and I didn't ask him if he was wearing khakis. But anyway, Jake talked me through uh, what my issue was, and we had the wrong brackets. So it took them uh, almost a week to get the brackets to me. This is my first day off, so we're gonna start putting the brackets back on. There's a difference in the brackets from the later model JKs to the earlier models. And if you read the directions, like they say, the first paragraph says if you have a 2007 to 2010 JK hardtop, then you're going to need a different bracket. Here's the difference. If you look at this one, it's completely flat before it makes the turn. Well, if it was an older model, or a newer model, I'm sorry, if it was a newer model, then it would fit flush. Well, when you line the holes up, you've got that gap. So the ones they send you actually have a bevel cutout to fit the ridge. So the new ones that he sent us line up and they fit. So let's get this thing put together. So just a thread or two, just enough to keep them in place. And then repeat the same thing on the other side. Okay, so we're going to put the, the T nuts along here. Screwdriver might help you a little bit, just get them raised up between the washer 
They are a little tricky. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use our J-Bar system, raise our rooftop up so we can get the Jeep under it. We've got the top on. We're going to check the alignment and the spacing between our mounting bracket um, and our sport bar bracket. If there is a gap, Terraflex sends you um, pieces to be able to put in there. As you can tell, that one's pretty tight, so I don't think we're going to need one there. Uh, once we get that tightened down, that's not going to go anywhere. Um, on the other side, however, there is a little bit more of a gap. So we're going to slide one in. Looks like we're going to have plenty of room to slide at least one more in. So that's two. The instructions tell you to put your top back on before you put the, the main rails on. We chose to put the main rails on to be able to use our J-Bar system. Now we're going to have to take the J-Bar system loose and we're going to have to take these main rails off in order to be able to line the brackets up. So now that we have our side rails back off, we're going to use our bolts to put down through here and line them up with the sport bar brackets. You may have to move around, wiggle it a little bit, but they should fall right into place. Put a couple threads on them, make sure that they're, they're in place, they're gonna be easy to get in and out. And then right on the front bolt, underneath the sport bar, there's a bolt right back in here, the brackets. You'll need to reach in there with your wrench and go ahead and tighten that up and secure it where it's at. We'll be able to get to the other two once we take the top back off. So once you get this one tightened up and get it in place, you're going to repeat the process for all four of the other ones. We'll put our, our bolt down in our brackets here, make sure that they line up good. When we get done there, you've got a bolt here and a bolt here. You can go ahead and tighten both of those up. That secures these in place, uh, and then we'll finish tightening all the bolts up once we get the hard top off. So now that we've got the top back off, we're going to go ahead and tighten up all of our sport bar brackets. Well, we measured our gaps between our sport bar bracket and the main top bracket. This is where we're going to put these little rubber spacers. This side took two, the other side took one. So now that we've got the side reels on, we need to line them up. Take your little tool that they send you, and it's not hitting it's not hitting your bolt. So we're gonna slide it till it falls into place. Make sure it's right where in the middle where it needs to be, so you can turn that bolt and tighten it up. So that one's lined up just like we need it. Then we're gonna go ahead and put our front cap on. So we've got our bottom bolt started into our end cap here. I've got to tell you that it's real tight. Um, when you first put it in there, you're gonna think that that bolt is too short. Uh, we've looked around, we've made sure that we had all the right bolts and everything, and it's just, it's really snug. So I just wanted to let you know that about that, and then we're going to move to the top one here. So now we're ready to put the cross slats on. Um, you can buy them individually, or you can buy a set of six. We chose to only buy two of them. Um, project we got coming in the future. Uh, is only going to require two of them. So, initial videos are showing that they're completely unassembled. When we got ours, it already had the end caps on. However, we're going to have to take one of the end caps off to be able to put the T nuts on. They're not real hard. You just got to kind of hold them and bump them, and they pop off. Now, 
the other thing that it shows uh, in most of the other instructional videos is putting these slats on this way. Um, so you've got a, a recess or a drop down underneath your side rails. We have chosen to put them this way to where the top of our cross rails are almost flat with our side rails. And we've done that for another project that's coming soon. So we're going to set these up here. We're going to put a slide our T nuts in. You're going to slide two in per side. Then we're going to put our end cap back on. All right, now we're ready to slide them on. All right, so our T-nuts are going to go in here. Small flat hex screws. In there. We're going to leave them a little bit loose for right now so that we can adjust them. Before we start the process of putting the T slat or the cross slat in, we're going to go ahead and put our T nuts in. Put two in on each side. Okay, now we're going to test fit, so we want to slide the slat. Just right down over the top. Gonna slide the edges out to make sure that that they fit where they need to be. Fit on this side. So now we've got it generally adjusted. We're going to slide it in. These two tabs right here are going to slide along the top T rail, and then we'll be able to put bolts in the bottom of the bottom T rail. Once we've got our hex nut, or once we've got our hex bolts tightened in right here along the side rails, don't forget to tighten up the hex nut bolts, the hex bolts that are right here. They're a little tough to get to. If you flip them the other way, they'd be easy to get to, I'm sure. The last piece on the rails is the back cover. You're gonna need the button screw, flat washer, on top of the flat washer, you're going to get one of the larger O-rings. That's going to come up through the bottom. These caps come in two pieces, so this one is going to go, and it's going to sit right here. This gasket's going to go below it. When this comes up through, you're going to have the O-ring, and it's going to fit right here. Now this is going to attach to our main rail with the T-nut that goes right in here. And then there's another one that goes up here on top for the top one. Alright, All right, so to try to put the T-nut in the bottom and then thread the bolt up into there, proven to be extremely difficult. So here's what we've come up with. We're gonna go ahead and put the bolt through the bracket, start the T-nut. Then slide it in. So now with the bottom bolt in, we can locate our T-nut here. Put our top Allen head in. And then tighten our bottom. We'll be done with this side. It'll be time to move over to the other one. So Bill's finishing up with the last bolt. Got to say that I like it a lot. It's as close to factory as I've seen for a rooftop rack. The only thing left now is to put it on the J-bar system and get it put back on the Jeep. All right, now we get the top back on. We're going to go ahead and start our bolts. Got to love Harley's on a Sunday. Okay, now that we've got
got our top back on, we're going to start our, all of our bolts. We're going to make sure all the bolts line up before we tighten anything. So we're going to start with the ones on the inside of the factory bolts. Then we'll go up top to the new Nevo rack bolts. So now if everything lined up right, you should be able to take your supplied tool, put it down in the hole, start these bolts, and be able to tighten them right up. When you get ready to remove your hard top, in addition to your factory bolts, these four bolts right here are the only thing that you will need to take off to remove. All right, now that we got the Terraflex Nebo roof rack on, we took it for a drive. There's absolutely no wind noise. Terraflex obviously done their homework on this one. Some people like the exoskeleton rack. Some people like the big flat roof racks on top. And then you have people who like the one like this. This one to me looks more factory. That's kind of what we were after. And I think it's going to fit what we're getting ready to put on top really well. I hope you guys have liked this video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Remember, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks again for watching Cody Waffle Overlord.